Hello, Grandma DC here. And I know it's been a while since I vlogged. I went through a week of radiation, which encompassed two weeks because we had to do five sessions and it was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then a weekend, and then Monday and Tuesday. Today is, I think, Wednesday. I have no idea. I keep losing track of time. Um, I have to say, I was going to vlog during the radiation, but um, there just wasn't a whole lot to vlog. It was just going and, and laying. The worst part <laughs> was getting this mask made that they, they stretched this plastic, this warm plastic over your face real tight and they molded it to your face and then they bolted your head down. I have to say, I was very confident in my ability to be stoic and to get through this and I was determined and they put it on my face. And they were pressing it in and my mind's going, it's like being at a spa. It's just a massage. It's just a warm towel. It's, you know, trying to convince myself of all this. And it was fine until the next day when I went back and they, it had dried and they actually strapped me down. <laughs> and the minute they did, I was, my brain just exploded with panic. And I thought to myself, you know, you can flail your arms laying on this table all you want. <laughs> You know, this is not going to do any good. So um, the first treatment was long because they had to line up everything because they were uh, doing the tumor in the back of my neck. They said they could actually kill the darn thing out. And, and I'm, I hadn't been able to move my head to the right for, you know, a long time. And so anyway, <clears throat> you're laying there, all this stuff's going through your head, and you are absolutely immobile. You know, you, you cannot move. Um, you would definitely hurt yourself if you fell off that little narrow hard glass type table that you're <clears throat> balanced on. <clears throat> I'll tell you why I can't talk in a minute. And it has to do with the radiation. So anyway, I, uh, they said, I, uh, you know, just hold still. and I, Like I have some choice here. So I started counting. My first thought was, well, just pretend that, you know, the nanobots are in your body and they're going and eating all the cancer, which I have high hopes for nanobots in the future. And I'm like, just then I thought, no, that just made me even more panicky. So I had my hands in my pockets. I had a hold of my pants, holding on tight while I was strapped in. And I could hear the machine buzzing. You really couldn't open your eyes too much other than to peek. And, uh, and it had a beautiful ceiling. It looked like the sky with cherry blossoms. And I thought, well, that just ruined cherry blossoms for me. But uh, I was laying on the machine, goes around you in a circle and everything, and it buzzes. You don't feel anything. I mean, there's absolutely nothing to feel at this point. Um, so I started counting. And I managed to count to, uh, I, I counted 60 seconds, which is a minute. And I did that like 10 or 10 times. <laughs> I was keeping track of my fingers in my pocket. And I was trying to count slow. After that, they went faster. You would go in, they would strap you down. It went faster. They actually gave me, um, afterwards, my blood pressure was really high. And the nurse was like, well, did you take your Ativan? And I'm like, what Ativan? No one told me anything about Ativan. And so they gave me a script for Ativan. But I didn't use it because I was like, you know, this is ridiculous. Pull yourself together. Okay. And I got through. Um, I had worse side effects from the radiation that I did from chemo. And the doctor told me, you're that person. I was like, I guess so. Uh, he said two of us he'd ever known of had worse reactions to radiation than to chemo. With chemo, I had not been nauseous. With chemo, I'm tired and I hurt for a week afterwards. Like a lot of pain from the chest down, bone pain. It's a nightmare. Can't even talk, can't even think for a week after chemo. We all know that. Um, but I haven't had nausea and I hadn't had, you know, a lot of other things uh, that people talk about hugging the toilet and everything. Well, the radiation to the base of my skull, um, has caused nausea. I'm taking my anti-nausea pills now. Uh, it has caused me to have a uh, pain in my neck, uh, worsening, but they said that was normal. You know, you got to get worse to get better. Okay. And, and I can. Now watch this. I can move my head to the right, which I had not been able to do in months. So it hurts, but the effects of radiation continue on. So he said for the next couple of weeks, and then it should get better. Uh, so we have high hopes that that was uh, a palliative thing to do to get me to where I can move my neck again 
and uh, and lessen the pain eventually. Although right now, my ear is plugged. I thought for a while I was going to go deaf. Uh, the whole side of my face swelled up uh, two days after I had my second treatment. Uh, my jaw swelled up and everything. The doctor said he had no idea why that happened, other than it may have irritated some TMJ or something I had going on that I didn't know about. So got through that, didn't vlog, because I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is just not fun at all. I didn't have much surface reaction as far as like burns, rashes, anything like that, because it was only five treatments. But uh, I have to say the radiation department was the nicest people. And why? All of those radiologists are young, good-looking men beyond me. If you are handsome as all get out, look like you could be in a GQ magazine, become a radiologist. They all look like that. <laughs> I was like, wow, and nice. Didn't even come close. These young men were so sweet. And they got you right in, strapped you down, and got you right out after the first one. Uh, the last one was the quickest. So... I rang the bell, ding, 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 when I left. It said, I'm done with this. And um, hopefully it didn't cause more damage. That was always a chance with radiation, you know. And I will get through the nausea. I'm sitting outside trying to get a little bit of sun today, although, you know, with radiation you're not supposed to get a lot of sun. But um, I'm just going to be here talking to you guys for a little bit because I have a story. I have a story. I have a story. This, this is all leading up to having I hate long-winded people, and I'm being one. Sorry. So I had something crazy happen to me. Mom and Pam and a friend of uh, Pam's were bringing me back for the weekend. And uh, they wanted to eat out. It's Missouri. No one around here believes COVID exists. So very few people are wearing masks and life is going on. The kids are back in school and you wouldn't think anything was happening around here. Except for the dead bodies in the street. They're scoop. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um... But we have had our uh, COVID doubling and tripling and quadrupling here in this state, but nobody's paying much attention to it anymore. It's crazy. Except me, because if I get it, I'm a goner, you know. So uh, they wanted to eat out. They wanted to eat in a restaurant. And we decided on Panera Bread because Mom really likes Panera Bread. And they all like Panera Bread, and we could get soup. And at this point, I'm like, to heck with the diet. I just want to eat something comforting and good. And if I don't have that much longer left to live, by golly, <laughs> I'm going to enjoy it. So they wanted to eat inside. So we went inside. I had only been in Panera once in my life because it's too expensive. And um, <clears throat> the choices are off the charts. So anyway, we got in there and ordered soup, uh, broccoli cheese. thought it was a pretty good choice. And, uh, and a half of a grilled cheese sandwich, which was really, really good. And I managed to eat it. So while we're sitting there, and we have eaten, finishing up, Mom was finishing up, this woman walks up to me, and here's where the story gets weird. Okay. She touches me on the shoulder. Now, I have my mask on, because I only took my mask off to eat, and then I put it back on, and I have a tube, and I have a HEPA filter, and, you know, my favorite mask in the world I've shown you all. Ad King. I'll try to list it below again if I remember, because people keep asking me where I got it, and it's off of Amazon. And uh, I've changed the mask out. You can change it to any mask you want. And I'm sitting there with my mask back on at the table waiting for mom to finish and everybody to get ready. And she touches me on the shoulder and she says, um, she's shaking, like shaking. And she says, may I talk to you? I need to talk to you. Well, we all know what I did for 12 years. I took care of developmentally challenged people. So crazy people are attracted to me. It's a talent. What can I say? All my life. <laughs> and if you're attracted to me and watching this and you're like, I get you, Grandma, then all the best people are crazy. <laughs> all my friends know I think they're crazy. So uh, anyway, I'm thinking, oh, it's another, you know, she's not, she's not all there. <laughs> and she's shaking. And she's like, I got to tell, I got to talk to you. I have to talk to you. And I'm like, okay, all right. You know, And she says, I want you to know that God is speaking through me right now. He told me I had to come talk to you. Well, that piqued my interest. And I'm like, okay. And she says, may I, may I tell you? And she says, my name is Amanda. What's yours? I told her. She's a very pretty. She says, God wants you to know that he loves you very much. He loves you above all others. She said, he wants you to be closer to him. And... He's telling you that there is more for you to do. This is not the end. 
And I thought that was really odd, because I've been told it's the end by doctors. And she says, there's more for you to do. And he has something great planned for you. And I gotta tell you, I nearly fell off my chair at this point. I still think she's nuts, but maybe God speaks through crazy people. <laughs> there's always a chance, right? And so, you know, I was really touched by this, and she was still shaking. She says, I shake when God speaks through me. I'm sorry. And I was just like, that's okay. She asked if she could hug me. I figured, she, she, I'm out here in the middle of COVID land. No one else is wearing a mask except my immediate, you know, people around me. And I'm like, why not? And gave her a hug. You know, we all miss hugs. And so, um, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound. You know. And um, then she left. Now, this just made me think back to that, hundred years ago when I was a young mother and I had my children in elementary school and we were at a Pentecostal church. I probably told this story on my site before, but I was uh, had to go to this church because we had our children in a private school and it was mandatory that you had to go there, and, and I, even though I'm not Pentecostal. And people were speaking in tongues and they were having an evangelical event and the tambourines were whacking and people were singing and it was pretty scary. A lot of energy, really frightening. And so I'm sitting there with my eyes closed and I'm imagining a bright light of energy around me and my children to keep some of this energy at bay because it was pretty intense. And I hear, you, really loud in my face. And I open my eyes and the uh, evangelical priestess, woman, whatever she was, is pointing in my face and she says, I see a bright light all around you. What? That's what I was imagining. And she says, you're going to do great things. I'm a fat middle-aged housewife with a high school diploma at that time. I was like, what great things am I going to do, you know? When I got through that, but it always stuck in my head because it was such a freakish moment. And this was my second freakish moment. Um, but, you know, it, I told her, I said, the, the doctors haven't been real positive with me. And she said, don't listen to doctors. This was the crazy woman at the Panera. And, you know, Kind of, it was kind of nice. It gave me a warmth. It gave me hope. And uh, hope is something that's been truly missing during this cancer treatment. Very much missing. And um, even though I think she's insane, even though, you know, I don't necessarily believe in fairy tales, um, it was very hopeful. And those two events together, I don't think I'm going to do great things. No, I don't. Mom says, oh, you do your YouTube channel, and that keeps people entertained. And I said, no, the great thing is people who have been so kind to me on YouTube. People who have, thank you, Australia. Um, I forgot your name. I, 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 got your, I got your card and your donation. Thank you so much. And um, I, I'm like, people have done such marvelous things being generous of mind and soul as well as financially that um, I think that's great things other people are doing not not me personally but uh, you know if I can help someone else be a little less afraid afraid of the process of chemo and radiation then uh, I don't think it's necessarily a great thing but it's something I want to do so I have to tell you that today is the day after my last radiation. I have been taking my anti-nausea pills. I have not been feeling the greatest. I'm extremely exhausted. They said that's because your body is trying to heal, so you just really want to <laughs> you know, sleep. Um, but I'm out here in the sunshine. I'm talking to you. I'm alive. I'm moving. And, uh, and I'm way more hopeful today than I was before, after having talked to Amanda, the crazy lady in Panera's. <laughs> So uh, thank you, Amanda, wherever you are out there in the world, and God bless you uh, for trying to bring tidings of great joy. It's almost Christmas, isn't it? Can you believe Christmas is that close? <laughs> oh, heavens, oh my God. So I have my bracelet on, and it says, Life is not about surviving the storm. It's about learning to dance in the rain. And that is my favorite uh, statement right now. And I got a bracelet from Mom, Pam, and Claire, too. So... Um, I give you all that. I'm just trying to learn to dance in the rain. And I need to let the chickens out. So uh, I hope this helped catch you all up a little bit. And uh, everything is uh, going along. Kind of boring.
but it's going along. And uh, Scudner, Scud, what do you think, huh? Is it too hot out here? Say, so Scud says, I don't even have on any clothes. I took my clothes off. It's so hot. Naked dog. Here, Maggie. Here's my maggot. Here's a good girl. Say, so it's just the three of us. Betsy. Betsy's the only one smart. She's back here in the shade. <laughs> well, you get to be my age. You learn to be smarter. <laughs> that is the truth, girlfriend. Isn't that the truth? She's a good girl. I think what's getting too hot out here, we're all going to have to go inside. What about Bart? All we have left is Bart and Howl. Howl's around here somewhere. Bart says, oh, lay in the shade under this stump here. Well, that's a good spot. All right, you guys. I'm going to show you my new favorite mask. 